So welcome back to Pokemon Regional Championships Bremen. I'm Lydia Hombach and I'm here with TPCI commentator Nicholas Pierce. We are in round six now and we will see Hedy versus uh, Philip Emmerich. Yes, we will. Um, by the way, just want to clarify, I, I'm not actually employed by the Pokemon company. Yeah, yeah but uh, yeah, I've been, I've been known to be invited to be on their streams on a couple of occasions. Um, so yeah, basically both of these players were are still undefeated. They're both on the 5-0-0 and, and they've both not been on stream before, so it makes complete sense to feature both of them. And yeah, both, both of these players, more long-time players, you know, players have been around for yeah. quite a little bit, especially well, I mean, I didn't, I'd just seen these guys around the tournaments before so much, and it looks like we're already ready to start, so uh, yeah, they are going to flip over, and not, not quite sure who's going first, but oh, is it up in the window? Yeah, 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 we're good, yeah, we're good to start, so give them the thumbs up, and uh, yeah, they're ready to start, so. <laughs> Can reset the timer? Yeah, uh, so I have to stop it first. Stop and then reset. Stop, stop, reset? Yeah. Okay. No, it's fine. Um, so, Hedy flips over a Eleven Vulpix and Philip flips over a Deancey. So that means we'll be, we'll be seeing Gardevoir again. And I see a Grass Energy in Hedy's hand. Yeah, that might be Tapu Bulu Vikavort again. It's no. Hold on. I remember what this is now. Someone mentioned that there was um, someone playing Decidueye on a really on a really high score. Oh. It's Hedy. So Decidueye again. Yes, indeed. You guys were asking for the old. Yes, yes, now you, you were. Get it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah. So it's. I, I think. It, I think that's what it is. Anyway, I mean, I could be proven wrong now. I could just draw lightning energy and uh, be like, ha, trolled. But. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, it looks like yeah. Philip going for the Bridget. Really good start. Um, attaching a fairy to the Deancey and saying pass. But yeah, I mean, that that the Espeon EX in. Uh, Hedy's hand sort of tells me that it's not likely to be Vikavolt Bulu because Vikavolt yeah, Bulu doesn't doesn't normally play the Espeon. I mean, I guess it could do with the Coco Probe, but it just seems unlikely. Um, let me see. Oh, yeah, there Beacon. it is. Yeah, there it is. You will see Owls again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, you will. So Beacon gonna straight away just go for a Rowlet and a. Tapu Lele, obviously, yeah, tapu Lele. not too much to work with from Hedy's side there. Uh, just being forced to, <laughs> yeah, go for the beacon and uh, no, no supporter, no search cards, no nothing. In fact, if, 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 if anything, I think the only reason he benched the Espeon EX yeah, is not that he wants to, but if he doesn't, he could just lose next turn. Yeah, that's true, because then he would be, well, benched out. Yeah. Of course, you cannot carry on the game if you have no bench Pokemon left and your active gets knocked out. So back to Philip now. As we can see, he's off to a great start with already three Rolts down. So he will be able to, if he finds a rare candy Gardevoir, he can start getting to get those set up. Could even find Gallade if he wants to. Um, no uh, no Remoraid down yet, so he won't be able to get down Artillery just yet. But it looks like he's going to go for the Tapu Lele and... It's for like nothing. Interesting. Maybe he has a supporter card on his hand and just wanted to check his deck because it looks like he has a psych. Is this a psychomore? Yes, I, believe. I think it is. So he he just wanted to lay it on his bench and yeah, yeah. and yeah, he just go for the second more. So uh, looks like he finds he does find a Gardevoir off that and a Curlier, but no yeah. rare candy. So he's gonna have to wait another turn to get it out. But this is fine for him. It's not too bad. Had he hadn't really had a good start. So he he has time, he can tangle time, and he's also playing a setup deck, so they yeah. both have time for their setup. Yeah. Also interesting that Philip uh, went for the, um, I can't remember what it's called, I think it's called like Miraculous Wish or something like that. Oh wishful something it's some kind of attack with wish in it and uh, it's the one that from the that lets you um evolve a pokemon from the deck uh, but he already had the gardevoir in hand uh he opted to evolve the curlier into a gardevoir though instead of evolving the um rolts into a curlier so maybe he's just thinking that uh, he wants to get the gardevoir out as soon as possible but um yeah maybe he's thinking about some kind of energy advantages he wants to get his energies on the field as fast as possible yeah. because that's part of his setup mm. and as they are both playing setup decks the one who gets his setup done first is in an advantage of course yeah i just feel like from philip's side it would have been made more sense to go for the curlier because then next turn all he needs to find is two gardevoirs yeah. and he can sort of evolve them up even more easily um 
But I guess maybe he was worried about an N from Hedy's side because, of course, uh, Hedy did have the N in hand. So he was thinking, maybe. you know, I can't rely on this guard of staying in my hand. But interestingly, Hedy opting not to play the Lele uh, and instead just going for another beacon. That is indeed interesting. Maybe he thought that Philip can't have that much in his hand because he was going for the God of War. And just went for the attack and uh, went yeah. for the dance attack instead. Yeah. yeah. It's it's interesting how that's happened. So now back to Philip it goes as he attaches a double colorless and a fairy to, to the God of War using Secret Spring and a choice band. So God of War's got to get very loaded and a sycamore. He's discarding a lot of things here. He is. Uh, oh, he has an Ultra Ball and a Rare Candy, so he actually will be able to get out wow. either a second Gardevoir or a Gallade if he chooses to. It's very big for him. And this is... Let's see how what he goes for. Yeah. Probably, well, I would go for another Gardevoir. We will... Yeah, so Ultra Ball goes down. Uh, yeah, at this point, I think especially in this matchup as well, you want something that can still take a big hit. Like Gallade doesn't really hit anything in Hedy's yeah. like for weakness. Like again, the only advantage the only advantage you get with it is to maybe sometimes you control a little bit what you do with artillery. But it actually looks like I don't see any water Pokemon in Philip's That's deck. That's true. Maybe he's actually just not opting to play it. Or obviously, maybe he's not playing Gallade either. <sighs> maybe not. Um, or maybe the whole artillery line is prized. Which is unlikely, but could be. Yeah, well, I mean, in any case, it looks like he definitely doesn't need it right now. As it's, he just takes yeah, a knockout. True. And oh, wow, I think that's actually what's happening. We just see him taking artillery out of his prizes. So, yeah. Oh. So, seems like his whole artillery line was prized. Or yeah. is still prized. Yeah. yeah. He still has no rammer right. Yeah. But um, Hedy kind of shaking his head a little bit, looking like he's not very happy with what he's seen. He has got a Rekhani in Sidrui. He managed to put down another Rowlet, but. So sort of realizing, you know, mm, well, my opponent's already managed to get two Gardevoirs out. I've only just got my Decidueye out. It's going to be hard for me to really make this sort of pushback that I need. The one thing that is going for Hedy, though, is that both of these uh, Gardevoirs, or at least one or one of them, has been rare candied. So he can use Miraculous yeah. Shine, bring them back up. And although it won't take the KO, it then forces Phillips to have more resources to get the Gallade, to get the Gardevoirs back, even. But still, Hedy has the problem that his... Uh, Espeon is already in play and Philip is in a pretty good board position so it's not unlikely that he he's able to KO his Espeon and then Hedy has to get it back into his deck and back onto the field. Yeah, you know, this is very true as well. Oh, another field blower there as well. See, discarding both the choice bands is going to make it a little bit harder for Philip to take the KO on this Espeon. Uh, looks like the choice band on the Volpix as well, maybe yeah. not. Choice band on Volpix can be nice because then it means when you evolve into Nine Tails, you can do Ice Blade for 80 on the active, which can you know, be decent sometimes. Yeah, and we, we saw uh, that this kind of deck plays um, Volpix, uh, Nine Tails, so. Yeah, and we see that a retreat of the Espeon, so perhaps not opting to go for the de evolve this turn, gonna conserve it for later. And we might just see a Hollow Hunt GX actually, uh, given that, yeah, yeah. the, the Sidra is gonna go up. And he obviously can't attack this turn, so Fedora goes onto the bench guard of war and is it gonna be a hollow hunt? He's looking I think so. He's looking at discard pile. Yep, there it yeah. is. So he's gonna be able to get back any free cards and it's gonna be a red handed Sidrui straight away. But then for the third card, what is he gonna grab? Looks like it's gonna be a max, max potion. potion. Yeah. I think he was considering double colorless energy for a short time, but it's a bit ultimately deciding, no, it's okay, Max Potion will help me out more in this matchup. Uh, so back to Philip now. So pressure on Philip in order to try and mount a KO. It's going to be very hard for him to do, especially with the choice band discarded. Not impossible, though, especially not with that much energy wow. attached. So Crazy. actually, all Philip needs now is either a second secret spring or a choice band, and that'll do it because the, there's one secret spring, the double colorless, that's 180 damage just from the energy on the guard of our alone, and then an extra 30 from the one energy on the uh, Decidueye. But that's only a, a Rels on his bench, not a Kilia yet. So uh, he needs double colorless, uh, not double colorless, a rare candy, 
And um, no, yeah. no, he already he doesn't. He already has a second guard war on the bench. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he just needs to draw the energy off of this essentially. Oh, it's the it's a card on the very bottom. Yeah. With the clear. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, he just takes one energy. He does see it. So he actually has the KO on this Decidueye. Wow. And that is immeasurably huge. Hedy is double checking. Yep. It's enough, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, down it goes. And. Uh, I feel like he's playing extremely aggressive here. Yeah. And I mean, he has to. This is like, yeah. you know, he needs to just get as many energy down as possible in order to make sure he gets his KOs. And the crazy thing now about this Gardevoir is that he can actually, with one extra energy, he can KO a Decidueye with zero energy on it. Yeah. Yeah. And to me, Lydia, this really shows the strength of the Gardevoir deck that even against these, uh, these big number EX and GXs, stack out enough energy on and you're taking these big KOs. But it also shows the, the high risk because all uh, Philip has on his field is this one Gardevoir with all the energy attached to it. And had he, if Hedy is somehow able to to get rid of this God of War, Philip has a pretty bad board position. And you can see Hedy now goes for a Tapu Lele. Yeah. And well, we all know Tapu Lele's Wonder Drive. Uh, uh, no, not Wonder Drive. <laughs> energy Drive. Energy Drive yeah. attack. So let's see if he's... he's it looks like Hedy is considering attack, attacking with uh, Tapu Lele. Yeah, and this makes sense because, I mean, the Energy Drive would be doing a lot right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you're doing 180 without oh, a choice band, band, 210 with the choice band. And he still hasn't used his... Um, Feather arrows. arrows. That's a knockout. Yeah. Gosh, yeah. Exactly like you said, Lydia. Big commitment to take KO, but big risk as now he will be actually KO'd back. That's pretty incredible. <laughs> <laughs> and this came out of nothing. Yeah. It wouldn't have... It hadn't been possible if Philip hadn't attached that many energies to his God of War. Yeah, but of course, he needed to attach that yeah, many energies sure. to take the knockout. I guess the one saving grace for Philip is that it will be kind of... Not like mega easy, but easy-ish to get the KO back. All he needs... Is a God of War. A God of War. And, and energies. Yeah, it's uh, free energies and a choice band or four energies yeah. will do it. That's what he needs. So... With, oh, hold on. Oh, I think Hedy Hedy made a big mistake. Unless unless I'm miscounting, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's not en uh, it's not enough. He misplayed. He put the feather out on the bench guard over instead oh. of the active, and I missed the KO. Really big misplay from Hedy oh, there. Hedy just shaking his head. Yeah, he knows he he knows he messed up that one. Uh, Sometimes, you know, you get a little bit overexcited, you know, just think, oh, yeah. you know, I can take a really big turn, start taking the next card over, but no, you're actually 20 short of the KO, and now... Uh, and now Philip has a chance to really just make sure he wins this game. Just all he needs to do is just set up energy on that bench card over, ready to knock out anything, and at that point, you can actually take the win from there. Oh, Hedy must be kicking himself for that one. Oh, yes. And if Philip is now able to find a max potion, this would be insane. Yeah, you just... Because, I mean, at max potion, sure, you get rid of all the energy, but we're at the point in the game where it doesn't really matter anyway because you're going to lose the energy soon regardless. But it looks like all Hedy does is just uh, draw... Uh, well, rather, Philip just took, took knock out with yeah. the active, drew his card, uh, and... He uses Feather Iron now. Yeah, to take the knockout, so... At least he can get it now, but Hedy knew how big missing that was, and yeah, definitely. And he looks super upset. Yeah, especially because he knows how how long games with his deck can take, and that he he is probably not likely to have two or three full games. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Ice Blade goes on to the active after the Guzma with uh, she's going to be doing 50 to the bench guard of RGX so back to Philip now who doesn't need a lot to win this game he needs a is Philip down to one or to two prices he's, only, he's down to one so all he needs is a uh, double colorless and a Guzma to win the game because he okay. can just he can just uh, KO that Dark yeah, Trix sure. uh, he doesn't have it though but he does have an Acer Roller so that could be pretty big. You could use that to perhaps KO, uh, not to KO, to bring the Gardevoir back up. Yeah. 
And uh, well, he could also use that to bring a, a Tapu Lele back up and then use one attack for a Guzma. Yeah, it has to be over two turns to yeah. do it, but uh, Eddie would need to have the N in order to, you know, make to prevent sure. that from happening. Um, looks like Philip is going for the rescue stretcher now. I'm going to shuffle some in uh, instead of opting to take things to hand. Uh, and then now he's just thinking what he wants to do next. Looks like maybe eyeing up an Ultra Ball. No, just going for the Wonder Tag. So... He doesn't have the win, obviously, because he doesn't have access to the Guzma, so yeah, he will just be going for the Sycamore off the one attack. So... Oh, he does have Parallel City as well. That's interesting. It is. Do you play it here, though? Do you, do you get gain? Because you could play it like the way around where you reduce your oh, invention yeah, size. You, yeah, sure, you could. And then it actually, yes. You could get rid of the, the damaged Pokemon. Yeah. And then. That's not, nice. That is nice. And then not only that, but now all of Hedy's water and grass yeah. Pokemon will be doing 20 less damage as well, which is actually pretty big. Yeah, sometimes you you rather like to limit your bench and um, give your opponent an, a disadvantage as well. Yeah. Oh, it looks like he just field bloated away. Yeah, because he's gotten the yeah. effect out of it now, and I guess he wanted to get another Rolts down. Yeah. I think that, that was the big thing. Although, and now he can get Remoraid down too. And uh, doing the premonition, just to make sure he gets a, gets a good top deck for the next turn. And oh, I think I saw a Guzma here. Yep, you did. Uh, so now you can decide how he wants to arrange that. Looks like he's going to put, put that stuff to the top. Sadly, he has no access to artillery, because yeah. uh, if he did, then he could sort of use that to. Uh, essentially guarantee he yeah. gets draws both and wins the game, but instead just going to do energy drive for 80 onto the Nine Tails. Normally you don't want to, to leave your Tapu Lele in front, but uh, because it's rather easy prices, rather easy two prices, but in, in this uh, position or at this part of, uh, of this stage, stage of the, ga of the, the game, game, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Um, also, Hedy does not have a huge amount to work with. He has a, he had a max potion and a replacement double colorless to, you know, keep the nine tails fresh but still attack. But other than that, it looks like all he has is a Bridget. So no kind of draw supporters or anything like that available to him. He's uh, I don't know if Philip's able to seal the win for himself next turn, but it's it's missing the evolution yeah. on the on the Dartrix and Decidueye makes it a little bit ugly for him because all Philip needs is one prize. Don't forget that it's not he doesn't need to knock out a GX. He just needs to knock out anything. Yeah. And right now, it looks like yeah, it's gonna be an Ice Blade with a Feather Arrow onto the Remoraid to KO it. So heady thinking, I just don't want to allow Philip to set up his draws in a way where he can win the game like that. Um, Philip did put double colors to the top of his deck. It looks like. With the yeah. premonition, I think the the point of uh, Hadi um, knocking out the Remoraid was also that Philip is all down to one prize, so an N is pretty strong at the moment. And as Hadi is in uh, the uh, uh, worst position than Philip is, Hadi now needs to to buy himself some time, and an N can do that for him. Yeah. And oh, Hedy's able to see the Decidueye as well. That's huge. Oh, that that's pretty good. So that takes away the slightly easier win option for Philip because now, actually, God, that's even more huge than I realized. So the energy drag did eighty, yeah. which means that now the um, wait, is that, oh no, it actually doesn't matter. That's really that's really huge because yeah, Philip did eighty with the energy drive. So that means like sensitive blade does 130. 130 plus 80 is 210. It's exactly mm -hmm. a knockout onto the Lone of Nine Tails. So assuming Philip put a Guzma to the top of his deck, which I'm assuming he must have done, he just does Guzma, sensitive blade knocks out the, yep. the Lone of Nine Tails, and he wins. That's what he does. Yeah, it's really clever actually. So if Hedy doesn't have an N, then Philip actually wins next turn. So let's see if Hedy gets the N or has the N, but I don't think so. I don't think so either. Because then he would have played it straight away. Yeah. And so Hedy going for the retreat, knowing that you just can't leave this uh, this thing active. And yeah, we'll be switching into the Decidueye. Oh, he's really not sure. But yeah, he knows that you can't just leave the Ninetales active. Yeah, tentatively puts the Decidueye up. Draws the card. We know it's the Guzma. Up it comes. And yeah. yeah. So with that... 
Philip will take game one of this round, round six, and we will be moving on into game two. Really unfortunate start for Hedy there. Like he they said, he started with the Espion, which isn't ideal. You want to save that for later, really. Um, but all, all the way, Philip managing to mount really good, really good offensive pressure, and that one misplay with by Hedy putting the Fed Arrow on the wrong thing gave yeah. Philip the extra knockout, which meant that the game was so much easier to seal up later. Yeah, I mean the damage output of this Gardevoir was immense, and allowing Philip to attack with it uh, another time was not that good for it was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was game losing that's what it was yeah really really unfortunate uh, misplay there for for Hedy um, so in the meantime once again whilst, uh, the, whilst these guys are setting up let's have a look in the chat see what you guys are saying uh, let's uh, see this yeah yeah I was seeing if you guys uh, on the how many rounds uh, we have today someone was asking we will have nine rounds today so yeah. yeah, we're really looking forward to uh, three more rounds. Woo! <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. If you guys, see, if you guys all are seeing here, yeah, just reacting to the to the misplay. Um, yep. Yeah, so it is nine rounds today, as I just said. Uh, see if there's any questions here. Um, had the energies? No, I don't think so. Someone was asking for Jasper. Um, he was on stream earlier. Yeah, he was on stream before. He, he he won his match on stream. Let me check what his record is. Yeah, someone was saying you can't Guzmer and K the Nine Tails if it's active, but um, if like if he just leaves it active, then Philip just plays another supporter retreat to the sensitive blade anyway. So we're, we're saying Guzmer on the assumption that the you know the Nine Tails will be brought onto the bench, which it did it did end up happening. Um, so we're just gonna have a look for you now. Uh, Jesper is currently on two zero three. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's get back into the game. Uh, looks like they've already started, and it's uh, Hedy's turn now. Hedy, uh, of course, started. So it's uh, the first turn. He started with a Tapu Lele, which is not. A story you want to have but he had a second tapu lele in his hand um used wonder tag for a bridget and bridget for two datrix and one alolan uh Vulpix, which is a pretty decent standard start it, uh it's, sorry uh, it's two rowlets <laughs> it's, uh, it's it's okay yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's uh uh, sorry, uh, it's uh, very, very easy to sort of think. What, what is it, do you think you what's the name in german do you know or uh i have no, no idea <laughs> this but yeah, that, it's, it's cool. So yeah, DC goes on to the uh, bench. Wait, hold on. Did why is he evolving that? Did did Philip just draw pass? Why is that? Wow, I think so. He must have. Yeah, because otherwise that there's no way that. Yeah, he's going yeah. for the sycamore. Oh, oh my. Oh dear. He he just needs a choice band. Uh no, choice band won't do more damage. Oh yeah. Oh. He he needs he needs red candy decision, right? That's what he needs. Uh, doesn't doesn't like doesn't look like he got it though. But even then, but he just still he's in a good position. Yeah, literally. Yeah, energy drive, and then does Philip draw anything? <laughs> Fairy energy. Oh, oh. my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, okay, he's got red candy delayed actually, so it it, it it buys him some more time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, now he can use the ability. Yeah, but it's only premonition, so yeah. if Hedy can get the win this turn, then it still doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, he pass. Does Hedy have the win? He needs... What do he need? He's already done 40, so he needs... He did not attach an energy, of course, because he does not want Tepo Lele to do more damage. No. Um, so there's... Skylar. Skylar, yeah. yeah. For an Ultra Ball. <sighs> But can how do you actually get the win this turn though? Like, does he have enough damage output? There's Ultra Ward's guarding a choice band and a field blower decidui. So, actually, hold on, thinking about it. So, if he has another, because the it's already taken forty, so it's got one hundred and ten left. Yeah. So he can deal twenty damage with a uh, feather arrow, so it's ninety. But that's not enough. That's not enough, no. So Philip survives! <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> that That is... There comes the energy. Yeah. And Tapu Lele, finally. <laughs> <laughs> F 
Philip, oh. Philip knows he was lucky to get out of that one. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there comes the end. Of course, with a handful of energy, you, you can't do anything more than shuffling this back into your deck. You can't discard it. There's no way. No, no, there's not. So, again, lucky break from Philip. He did, if he did not have the red hand in Gallade, he actually would have like, yeah. lost. And then just <laughs> getting the red hand in the Gallade was perfect too, because, of course, it was able to get him into the top deck of the Lele yeah. and actually get back into the game. Um, I mean, I guess the sad thing is, though, from uh, Philip's perspective, is that Hedy's setup is still kind of amazing. So it's yeah, that's true. <laughs> so we have to see how this ends up playing out. But what does Philip even have? There's a sycamore. Oh, that, no, that was from the premonition. Premonition. Um, yeah, it just does. So excuse me, <laughs> sensitive blade from one thirty, um, and. That he draws, and uh, he's got perfect decision out now, and the nine tails yeah. too, and an ace roller. Oh, that's just unfair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now he's gonna attach a DC to the nine tails, do a couple of feather arrows, KO the Gallade, and uh, yeah, there we go. So down it goes. So Philip's just left with a Tapu Lele. No, not even a Rolts. They... And his hand doesn't look that good as well. No. Oh, in fact, the KO was with Feather Arrows, I didn't even realize. So then Phil Hedy was even able to Ice Blade after that. Um, a second tap of Lele goes down for Philip, uh, probably for a Bridget if he thinks he has the time. If he doesn't, he might just go for another draw supporter. So there is, uh, yeah, there is the Bridget. Can you switch those? Switch off? Yeah, 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 the Volpix will go set into the active after retreating, and it will be a beacon from Philip. So Philip now is finally able to actually be set up properly. Yeah. <laughs> but still, he's uh, a little bit behind. Hedy has a pretty good setup, and um, yeah. Yeah, he does. And Hedy was able to actually wreck Handy into another Decidueye, and he even said to Philip, don't bother sh getting the Pokemon because they're going to end. So <laughs> the beacon uh, did, not st did not stick at all. Philip didn't even get a chance to take his Pokemon out. Uh, although it looks like this draw from the end is pretty good. He's got a uh, Curlier and a Remoraid, so it's pretty nice. That's uh, definitely something you can work with. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the problem now though is that the, the way this is why it beats other evolution decks is exactly by doing this before, yeah. uh, where you know you'd uh, just do Feather Arrows combined with Ice Blades to pick up, pick up evolutions before they can actually become anything meaningful. It was a lot easier to do before with Forest of Giant Plants, but if your opponent has a really slow setup like how it's happened here, then essentially the Decidueye combined with Ninetales just never lets your yeah, opponent's Pokemon evolve. And this also leaves your opponent with a lot of useless cards in their deck because they can't evolve them. Yeah, yeah. so you just uh, play Sycamore and just draw a bunch of evolutions like, can't use any of these. Um, so now Philip, yeah, having played the Sycamore, um, he's uh, just decided to beacon straight away, not playing a single card. And that's not a sign of a good hand. <laughs> no, or at least it's not a sign. Maybe, maybe you can find something to work with afterwards. But um, so Hedy Hurt essentially has a choice here. You can actually um, KO either the. Oh, actually, yeah. you've got the KO on the Ralts already. So. So there are no Ralts left. No. Which is really sad. And yeah. is that going to be a Guzma? I think so. And, oh, he doesn't even, he actually only did one Feather Arrow to KO the Rolts yep. as well, so that means that you can actually KO both the Remoraid and the Gorolts, leaving Philip with basically nothing. Yep. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what's happened! Ice Blade taking down the Remoraid, and if, if, if I'm Philip here, I'm thinking about moving to Game 3, I'm not yeah, gonna lie. Yeah, I would just <laughs> scoop. Like, you've got time and everything, you've you won Game 1 relatively quickly, there's... He's going for the beacon, but he's not even benching a roll. So what is he actually achieving here? So he's does some beacon for another Lele. Yeah. Yeah, he he didn't even mention the roll because he knows that if he does, it's just going to get picked off again. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, what if you were Philip? What could you do? 
that you you can't really win the game with Lilith. So you don't really have any any options. No, it, 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 Philip has taken. I think he's taken one prize or none. I'm actually not sure, but yeah, there's like he's taken one prize. Okay, what is Philip thinking here? Is he just wasting? I don't know, wasting time? Just doing Ace of Roller again and again? Like... And I believe Hedy's deck isn't that... that much... Uh, isn't that low in cards, so... a deck out won't be a win-win condition as well, so... This is very strange. I don't understand what's going on here. Um some kind of <laughs> manipulation going on it's just like <laughs> um parallel city I, I i just don't understand what's going on at this point like surely just yeah there we go yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh so Hedy uh, eventually takes uh takes game two um and we are now moving on to game three so we've got 20 minutes left so it's not an unreasonable amount of time to finish a full game of pokemon although they had to play a little bit fast i guess um, especially considering they're both stage two decks. But they have they had half an hour for two games, so that makes fifteen minutes a game. Yeah. So yeah, it's sure. not impossible. No, it's not. So who do you think uh, has the advantage here, Lydia? Who do you think is going to win game three and take the match? Well, as we as we saw in the last games, uh, a huge factor is how good your setup is, and we saw Hedy playing very patiently, and we saw Philip playing very aggressively. So I believe Hedy is in a slight advantage, even if the matchup might be more favorable for uh, a God of War in general. Who do you think is in favor? <sighs> like, I, I'm, I, I agree with you in the sense of I think it largely comes down to setup. I feel like if Hedy is able to set up so much quickly and then fill up to the point where we saw what happened in that game, yeah. where just picking off the roles before it even become anything meaningful, then Hedy will win. But in terms of overall overall raw power, I think Philip has the edge, as we yeah. see there. Um, especially if I mean, I guess to be fair, Hedy lost the game on his own misplay rather than yeah. his deck. So maybe Hedy overall has the advantage. But I think no matter which way you look at it, it's close. It is close. Yeah, and that's why those people, uh, those players, are one one and now play their third game. Yeah, indeed. Um, so prizes out. Pokemon flipped over, <laughs> a double Lele start from both sides <laughs> as uh, Philip takes his draw. He does have an Ultra Ball, so he will be able to, assuming the Bridget and his other Lele is unprized, he just uh, go for the usual uh, Lele Bridget out Pokemon start. He might even play two Bridgets because Bridget is a very important supporter card. Yeah, well, we, we see yeah. he has one available anyway, so that's good for him. Lele, Bridget, gonna grab himself probably two Rolts and then either a Volpix or a Remoraid is the usual third choice yep. oh, or say, Deancey I think that Philip likes going for Deancey a lot he, I think he likes having the option of just being able to attach energy to something and involve something straight from the deck and actually that can be quite important against Hedy because it's a way to stop him from yeah. doing those you know fed arrow true. plus ice blade plays where he picks off the basics before they evolve it's interesting to see because in not every God of War list uh, people play Deancey but Philip seems to like it a lot. Yeah, uh, I, I playing God of War myself. I play Diancy. Uh, I quite like it. <gasps> Hedy just drew past. Oh no, not again! <laughs> it's like for the like the opposite way around. Oh, this this game sometimes just. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and Hedy, of course, he had the double colorless in hand, but you're not going to attach that because then God of War is going to hit you for a lot more damage, and now. I think I saw a sycamore in Philip's hand as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, not you know, Hedy not going to be able to catch a break here as we see Philip does find another Curlier as well. So he'll be able to evolve that. And so next time he'll be able to get out two Gardevoirs. And if Hedy doesn't like draw a supporter, if I had oh, he, yeah, he, he, he just, can just use his Deancey to yeah, evolve. So he can actually get Watton Gardevoir out guaranteed. Um, Hedy almost looks like he's gonna scoop right away. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're if you're Hedy, can you can you blame yeah. him? Like, no, of course not. No. I mean, this is again this uh this situation where you you really don't even know what you wish for. Just just something, just some supporter card. But even then, you need to think like 
how can I even get back? Yeah. How can how can I catch up to my opponent? It's exactly what happened to, against your two yeah. Philip in the last game, but now it's happening to Hedy. And it looks like his draw for turn was a Guzma. Oh. So he needs to think very carefully about what he wants to bring out here. And it looks like it's going to be the Remorade. This actually works out quite nicely for him because it means that Philip needs to find a float stone to retreat properly because, of course, because Hedy doesn't have a bench, uh, it's actually impossible for Philip to play Guzmo himself because mm -hmm. you, your opponent yep. needs to have a bench to do so. Um, so that is down Ultra Ball, discarding a Curlia and Fairy Energy. Uh, it's like probably going to grab an Octillery off that. Yep. And we see that Philip has access to a Gallade and a Gardevoir as well. Now, Gallade can't take the knockout because uh, even with a choice man, it's 160 with Sensor Blade, it's not enough. But I think Philip's just hoping to dig for enough energy to take the win that way. And he's going to do the Premonition first. Just... Of course. So, again, there's a really cool combo you can do uh, with um, the Gallade plus Artillery to make sure you draw into exactly what you need. Um, so he's it... attaching an energy to Remoride and uh, retreating. And he's uh, doing Sensor Blade for one first. I think he realizes he can't take the one hit knockout. Yeah. So what does Hedy draw? Oh, oh, is it actually, it's an Acer, oh, it's an Acerola. Aww. <laughs> there, there it is. <laughs> uh, Acerola for the, for the, the, the self, you know, <laughs> just the, the self scoop essentially. Um, yeah, this, wow. Well, uh, yeah. Hedy, Hedy showing him his hand cards and oh, oh, oh. man. Yeah, that's. That happens in Pokemon sometimes, sadly. There's not much you can do. It's uh, annoying when it happens. To be fair to Hedy, this is his first loss, to the, loss of the day. So again, although he's obviously upset to lose this way, it's still not the end of the world. He can st he's still in a very, very good spot yeah, to make day two. Yeah, he's at a 5-1 now. Yeah. So only one more win, win and one draw. So yeah. Yeah, that should be... That should say it should guarantee him day two. Do. But yeah, in any case, we're with that win, um, we will we do have time for an interview right now. So we're going to take a quick little break uh, to get Philip into the room. Until then, don't go away. <laughs>
So welcome back guys. I'm here with uh, Philip Emmerich who just won the sixth round and is at uh, 6-0 now. Yep. So uh, congratulations Philip. Thank you so much. <laughs> so um, you're playing God of War. Uh, have you tested it a lot? Yeah, I tested it a lot because it's definitely like the best card in the game. And But there are many counters to the deck. And I think in an open field, this is for sure the best card. You can attach so many energy and yeah, just steamroll decks. <laughs> That's true. So um, how how did you feel the the matchup was? We talked about who is in favor in the um, in the um, matchup you <laughs> just played. Um, did you test this matchup as well, or was the deck a surprise for you? Not really. I mean. Decidua is still kind of the same deck. They're not like one or two turns slower now, but they can still snipe around damage yeah. and devolve you. So stage two deck normally isn't too great against it. Okay. But yeah, I was able to kind of overcome him. Okay. And um. And in the third game, he obviously dead. So. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. And the, in the first game, he also did kind of a, a misplay yes. yeah that was huge as well yeah, but i wasn't uh, expecting it yeah so when i attached like i think it was seven energies yeah. i didn't think at all about choice band dc and if there will be a knockout but yeah yeah was lucky there <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes you need some luck uh how did the rest of your day went so far yeah so far so i played against three ho o decks which is a really good matchup yeah, for me yeah <laughs> then i played against greninja and just grew so good that, <laughs> <laughs> that you couldn't do much and uh, yeah then you saw this round and i yeah. don't remember <laughs> that's What okay else? so you're almost in uh day oh, two yeah, mirror match. oh, oh okay mirror mirror match. so uh we saw you play Deance. Mm -hmm. um what do you like about Deance? we we saw you you put it out a lot and, and fast yeah it's just uh that sp and ex can kind of stop your whole deck yeah but with Deance, you can always get to the stage two which they only can devolve to stage one. Yeah. So, for example, if Grandpa Poton is a big deck and they play Espion, and if you don't uh, play the JNC, they can just start on turn two, devolving you every turn. Yeah. With Poton in play, and you just that's don't have true. a great time then. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'd say good luck for the rest of the tournament and um, see you later, guys. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Is it awesome? Mm-hmm. Yeah.